Hi, and welcome to Newsmakers. For inside analysis and behind-the-scenes commentary from Santa Barbara's top journalists and local political leaders about the most important news events in our community, I'm your host, Jerry Roberts. Tonight, we look behind these headlines. With tens of millions of dollars at stake, the fierce competition over marijuana sales in Santa Barbara takes a new twist. A breakthrough on Santa Barbara County's serious shortage of psychiatric beds for the treatment of the acute mentally ill. Elected officials scramble to head off a fast-track federal proposal to open federal lands to fracking. And another hurry-up effort emerges at City Hall, where the council moves to unionize all, union, all labor on construction projects. Our panel tonight, political reporter Josh Molina. Nick Welsh, executive editor of the Santa Barbara Independent. Blanca Garcia, staff reporter for the Independent. And former city council member Dale Francisco. Thank you all for coming. So Josh, two years after we, I name no names, voted for legal pot, uh, there's not a single recreational shop has opened. And now a new legal skirmish over one that at least won its permit. What, what's going on? Well, the question is whether Santa Barbara is trying to keep a retail storefront dispensary from opening up in the tourism area of, of State Street, the downtown area. They held this contest, people submitted, they rated them, they evaluated them, and they did it a couple of times. And one of the companies that got aced out of a permit has filed a lawsuit saying we were unfairly disqualified from this. And their shop would have been on State Street and it would have been on the thousand block, it would have been on 900 block of State Street, so right in that key area. And uh, they're saying, hey, you guys did the math here really weird to score us. In an initial evaluation, they scored uh, number one. And then they did this interview situation. It was at the David Gebhardt room. It was really entertaining. It was several hours. And after this meeting, they reevaluated them after asking them questions. And so they dropped down to second place. And uh, this company is SGSB. With three permits at stake. Three total. They dropped down to second. One of the rules of the permits is they cannot be within a thousand square right. feet. So now we've got a new number one coastal dispensary. And then they said, I'm sorry, you're uh, within a thousand feet of this other one, which is on Chapala. So you don't get a permit. So they filed a lawsuit saying, this is totally unfair. Right. And, and, they, you, and you scooped uh, everyone, I think. Uh, on this. Did you not, John? about 28 minutes. <laughs> Honestly, Jerry, me scooping the independent is not, oh, it's, it's, not it's not really news, let you know, just, so we don't need to bring it up let me, anymore. Let me, just before we get into the legal piece, why do we win and not have marijuana shops in the tourist area? I mean, it well, seems a it, little counter. So it's a theory. It's a theory. That's what some of the people who are criticizing the process are saying. Of course, the city of Santa Barbara is not saying that. They're saying we evaluated all of them based off of their security plan, their credentials, capitalization, how much money they had, a whole you know, thousand point criteria. And we're talking point like 941, 913. We're not talking huge uh, discrepancies. It's so three point difference out of a thousand. Exactly, very close. So there's this perception that the city of Santa Barbara found a way to rate this company differently so that they could get them off State Street. Why would you not want it there? Yeah. I mean, you, if you can have all of the tax base in Santa Barbara without have, having it downtown, why not? These shops have to have security. They have to have uh, guards. I mean, it's not like people are getting not getting loaded on State Street anyway. First of all, you got guys sitting out on the bench in front of the the museum in, in that block, I believe that's the, that block get, getting stoned, and then everybody's stumbling around drunk. You've Everyone. Uh, well, Ernie yeah. Solomon says it's everyone, so <laughs> I always believe Ernie. So when you finally caught up with this story, Nick, you also noted that there have been an unusual number of busts of growers. Uh, well, yeah, there's two different tracks coming. So in terms of... Uh, the, the process here, there was a lawsuit, the city of Santa Barbara, and then the county of Santa Barbara, which has embraced the cannabis industry more than I've ever seen it embrace any industry. I mean, they have gotten behind it. 
in the EIR documents that the county prepared say our objective is to promote this industry. It's not like we're here. Right. To... So what they want to do is they've learned all this trouble to get people legalized, and so they want to get rid of the black market competition. They can undersell uh, the people who are doing it legally. And so they have raided eight different grows. So it would be Tepesque Canyon, Sabata Canyon, uh, which are, you know, Sabata Canyon is near Lompo, Tepesque is near San Maria, New Fuyama, uh, and they've... they've but, they, so this is not a coincidence that this is suddenly happening now. They're, no, no, this is... Um, the county is now collecting money uh, to uh, fund enforcement, and they've gotten um, three million bucks, and they're going to hire five people to go out there uh, and, and do eradication efforts. And this is definitely... We want you guys in. We want you paying taxes. Yeah. And if you're not paying taxes, we're coming after you. Does, does this uh, machinations at City Hall strike you as just kind of business as usual? You think there was anything? Now you're talking about the, the dispensaries. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. The way they fiddled you know, around. That was always one of the most complicated issues that we dealt with. I mean, there were so many different uh, contending points of view on that one. Um, I'm, that's one of the reasons I'm glad I am not on city council. Just to deal with that one. And, and I think D Dale w was already off the council before Anthony Wagner uh, started with the city, I think. Okay. Yeah, so with the police so department there. Yeah, so it's sort of a new era, and you know there are critics of how the police department is sort of presenting the information around storefront dispensaries. And so it's kind of a different kind of culture that's going on. Uh, right now at, mm. at City Hall. But this thing's going to get real serious because the lawsuit alleges that some documents were forged. They're not only suing the city, they're suing the other dispensary, Coastal. So they're, they're suing two people. And uh, these companies have a lot of money. So this can go very far. Yeah, and it's, and, worth, and it's worth a lot. I mean, and, the, the permit's worth a ton of money, right? And it's like 60, was it 60 million a year or something like that, you said? That number is... That number I actually wrote, and it was $40 million, and that was a gross So you didn't write that number. I did write that number, and that number is wrong. Um, uh, you, 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 you work downtown. You're from here originally. Uh, did you really feel that having a uh, you know, marijuana shop downtown is going <laughs> to lower the, uh, the cultural level down there? Uh, well, considering that there isn't very much of, of a cultural level now, I think you know there's, there's not really anything that's going to hinder that at all. So if anything... You know, throwing anything downtown, I think, is a good idea just to, yeah. to try and revitalize it a little bit. Well, I would have to disagree. I mean, I was downtown last weekend. I took my kids. You see lots of kids. For what? To, 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 to do go to what? the mall, to go to the world of magic. Get gelato. To do stuff that... You had the world of magic clothes. To do stuff that <laughs> families do. Play the and piano. you don't want to, I mean, you don't want to, you know, downtown in the heart of the tourism district, you probably don't want to say, oh... Here, have you, you know, seen sunny. these shops? Here's have the you seen these shop. shops? These shops are Gucciier than Apple. Yeah, they are. They, they are just totally like upscale. Mm -hmm. it, is like, it would be like something you could have in the Bacara. But it was interesting because I said, meeting right, that you talked about. This one. <laughs> <laughs> but also, think of the people Special that are going to be edition. going uh, yeah. into those oh, yeah. shops, too. It's, if you're going to be paying top dollar for your cannabis, then you're, you're, pro you're not the, yeah, some of the, not the homeless your nickel people bag that are on dealer the street. at all. Well, I, I think a lot of that remains to be seen. I think, well, you know, one of the issues okay. that some merchants have objected to is we don't want this heavy-duty security presence, all these goons on the street. It's going to... But they're inside. They're not. Uh, well, some of the, the shops are talking about we're going to have people patrolling the street. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. I, well, we'll see. <laughs> Let's see how that goes. Has anybody hired Capello, by the way, for this? <laughs> <laughs> Very early, very early. Uh, <laughs> all right, speaking of scoops, you really stumped Josh it. on this one. Uh, August 28th, yeah. <laughs> Come on, man. An unprecedented <laughs> meeting of institutions involved in providing mental health care. So, Have yeah. I got he, that right? Here's the deal. Here's the deal. I mean, this is like one of those stories which is really great and really um, sick at the same time. For the first time ever that anybody can remember, you have... Uh, executives from Cottage, from Marion Hospital up in Santa Maria, from Lompoc, meeting with County Executive uh, Mona Miyasato, Terry Mosnisich, and the head of uh, behavioral wellness, 
Alice Gleghorn sitting around at the same table looking at each other saying, hey, what do we do to create more uh, psychiatric bed space in Santa Barbara County? Santa Barbara County has 16 beds only. County our size should have about 45 to 60. Um, it has been a huge problem for over 30 years, the lack of bed space. We export people to Ventura all over the state at the cost of millions and millions of dollars a year. Um, to, you know, for people who are deemed what they call 5150, which is they, they pose an imminent threat to themselves or others. These are people who you know, cannot keep it together. They, and, and the lack of bed space, not only do you have the problem there in terms of just the cost, but the emergency rooms are all choked up with people who are in various states of uh, psychological crisis. Are you 5150? Are you not? And if, if you are sort of blowing your lid, probably being in an ER room isn't the best place to be. And if you are uh, in an ER room, probably what you don't want is somebody who is in a state of high psychic distress. Mm -hmm. So the fact that they are talking should not be Huge. a news story. It's big. But it has never happened. And I was actually at a meeting today um, at the County Puff Unit, which is a psychological health facility. It's sort of our 16 bed lockdown. I love it when you use uh, Puff acronyms. Yeah. <laughs> and, it's Nick's favorite, too. Uh, <laughs> they, you know, they're saying, it's crazy. We have never been in the same room doing this. All right. So I have not seen Nick this excited till, uh, since the last time the steelhead was threatened by <laughs> Dale's Dale. old water district. Does he go around a newsroom like t t talking about this all the time? Absolutely, actually, all the time, <laughs> really, all the time. So th this is you've been crusading for this. Let's let's be honest for for a long time. I've been beating the drum. You've been beating the drum. Why has this not happened before, Councilman? Don't ask me, that's the county. But I, I, I agree with Nick. I mean, this is incredibly important. It is. Uh -huh. Yeah, and because... And I'm really glad to hear these, that they're actually talking to they're you. They're talking, I mean, and really the fact that they're talking, who knows what's going to happen? So I call Well, up, what should happen? What should happen is this. We should get all these guys together and we should get a, a massive fundraising effort with all the high philanthropic donors in this town to um, create somewhere about 16 to 22 uh, beds. How expensive is this, it's though? It's mean, really expensive. Why? Because you have to meet all kinds of hospital uh, safety uh, construction standards. You have to have staffing standards. I mean, these are people. I mean, these are people who are ready to commit suicide. These are people who are ready to do damage to each other. Um, are these people part of our, our homeless population? They well? are a large part. Of, when you walk down State Street and you go, oh my God, oh, what's going on? I don't feel whatever. They are some of those people. You see them. They cannot take care of themselves. They go to the puff unit, they're let out. You know, it's, it's just. So, so would they be inst institutionalized through this? Or? Well, this is really what uh, uh, this. Uh, part of it really is just sort of the acute crisis right now, uh, put out the fire. And then they're also talking about about 40 beds of sort of um, long-term care. We, they have all these, here's another one, IMD, um, Institute for Mental Disease mm -hmm. or Mental Disorder. And so these are people who have to be sort of locked up for, you know, uh, uh, maybe eight months, a year and a half, something along that lines. And again, we don't have any facilities like that in Santa Barbara, so we farm them out elsewhere in the state at ridiculous cost. Um, Is marijuana a possible treatment for the, for, for, for the, I mean, it's a serious question. I just... You know, uh, to listen to the cannabis advocates, yeah, it actually does, and there are certain mental um, disorders that where Cannabis, depending on the strain, uh, is said to really you know, calm things down. Bipolar is one of them. Nice. I'm just surprised Nick didn't try to blame this one on Ronald Reagan. You know what? That, you know, Ronald Reagan gets a lot of blame, but I mean, the He's, people he that wasn't he, Trump. The people that he let <laughs> out of the asylums are all like 90 years old or 120 years old by now. So, watching, watching Fox News. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, and voting for Trump. All right. Well, we'll look forward to the meeting. I believe it's in November. Is it not the next meeting? And just, just for the record, there have been many. There have been several. I shouldn't say many, but other meetings since the one in August. So, so okay. So if they meet in November, then you'll be reporting on that in oh, February, man. right? Yeah. <laughs>
All right, Blanca, so you reported on an uh, effort by Salud, uh, Carbajal, Congressman Carbajal, and other local officials with what appears to have been a sneak attack by the Trump administration to start fracking on uh, public lands. How did this all come about? Yes, that's right. So uh, the supervisors were also present at this, um, at this get-together last Thursday. And uh, so what happened was the Bureau of, La of uh, Land Management put out a notice of intent on the Federal Registry um, talking about 1.6 million acres of not only um, public lands but also mineral estate um, that, they're that they're looking into fracking and drilling. And what uh, Supervisor Hartman mentioned over and over again at this, um, at this rally was that the federal government didn't alert local government, which is very unlike the way business is, is normally handled. Is it? Mm -hmm. So the way that they found out was through federal, um, through the Los Padres Forest Watch. They were the ones who notified the supervisors. And then uh, I know uh, Supervisor Hartman sent out a, a newsletter to her constituents, but that was with maybe two and a half weeks, or sorry, under two weeks um, for the public comment period. So a lot so, of people who... So have there been a lot of comments since, or...? There were 8,000 comments. Uh, oh. The comment period closed September 7th. And so with a two and a half, or, or with less than two weeks, there were still 8,000 comments that, that were submitted to, uh, to the Bureau of Land Management, which is, sounds like, I mean, is, is a lot definitely, but I'm sure if people knew a little bit more about it, um, there'd be a lot more comments, especially because a, a lot of the areas that are proposed um, are close to, there's one that's proposed less than half a mile from Kate's school in Carpinteria. And hmm. while there's, there's one, so there's 1. 1.6 uh, acres that are, that are in consideration. 400. 1.6 million? Yes, One, sorry, 1.6 million. Yeah, no, not just 1.6 acres, but 1.6 million. Uh, 400,000 acres are, pri are public lands, but 1.2 million of that is just the mineral estate that's uh, managed uh, federally, which means that that's land that's privately owned. So it could be someone's land, and a lot of those people weren't notified either. So Blanca, is this statewide? Yes, this is okay. statewide. It, it includes eight counties, and Santa Barbara County is, is one of them. Would you agree with me that Salute Carbajal has been asleep at the switch on this deal? No, I would not. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, but you're, you're in the water business, so, so this have been. Well, okay, you have been. But, I mean, fracking, that's not good for the water, right? I don't think that there's... I, you know, show me the study. I'm not aware of any study that shows that it's a problem for water supplies. I mean, typically, you're, these are happening at vastly different uh, depths below the surface, and they're geologically separated from each other. Wasn't that one of the issues, though, that was Yeah, there? actually, so there, there's plenty of studies that do show that it's, um, it puts groundwater at risk of being contaminated. How high that risk is is, is what's being contended and, and isn't really agreed upon, but that there is a risk, definitely. And uh, something that, that Supervisor Hartman brought up also was that um, a lot of the chemicals that they, they shoot into the ground um, aren't disclosed. They're, they're written off as, as trade secrets or, or something that, that they don't want to disclose so other competitors don't use. Uh, so it's not something that we can actually test for if there is contamination because we don't really know what to test for. What does our Deputy EPA <coughs> Administrator, uh, Mike Stoker, uh, think about this, do you think? You know, last I saw Mike was in New Orleans having a good time. So. <laughs> Maybe he's not thinking about it too yeah, much. Yeah. But this is your hero, Ryan Zenke, is it not? This who's, is my hero, been, Ryan Zenke, who I, maybe I'm running into him at Bonds again this year. Yeah, um, yeah he is definitely pushing this. And uh, is it a serious you know, push, do you think? I mean, what we're doing right now is, what this is, is a casting out of the net. And it's a very preliminary in, in the process. And like a lot of those places, you know, I mean, by Kate School, and then if you look, there's a lot, you know, Lake Kachuma, and um, you think these are probably two small uh, areas to be really um, that viable. So there's a lot of stuff in there, which is sort of alarming in theory, but in practice, it probably will not be uh, of interest to the industry. To the extent because it's not going to pay off. It's not going to pay off. Yeah. So we're way down, but it is true. I mean, the, the public comment period was 30 days, which is the bare minimum. And, you know, they, they can ex open that up 60 well, and that's, days. Well, I, mean, that's, what the, I mm -hmm. mean, that's the whole policy of the right. administration, just and jam this tip away. So what happens next? So, so Carbajal, um, Carbajal, Hartman, and Forest Watch all asked for an extension of the public comment period, and that was denied. So. Yeah, China. now did, did Salud get even a response back? Because Salud has called Zinke several times. 
uh, about... He can't get his calls returned? He doesn't get a call return. He doesn't get anything. Well, it's good we're working for bipartisanship then. <laughs> I'm, glad, I'm glad to see he's all over that. So what happens next? Uh, so what happens next is that the, um, the draft of the environmental impact statement will come out sometime early 2019 is what, what they're estimating. Um, and once that comes out, there's another public... Um, public comment period that'll open up. And so that's what they're really pushing right. for, for, for everyone to comment then during that time and to really take a look at, at, the, uh, at the report and see if it's really covering all of the grounds and considering all of the environmental impact. So then we'll find out then whether it's how serious it is and whether they're just trying to push, push our buttons mm -hmm. in, 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 in California again. All right, well, we'll keep an eye on that. Dale. Mayor Kathy Murillo yes. and outgoing council member Greg Hart have suddenly surfaced a plan <laughs> to require union contractors on city capital projects and, and have cast it as an urgent health and safety issue. Is that really what's behind it? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that softball, Jerry. Um, I didn't. I didn't hear health and safety. Oh, that was all the quotes in your story. That was really? all. Yeah, we, we, I watched. I watched it later on video and it seemed to me the way that Greg was was pushing this was that this is going to result in higher quality buildings, longer lasting buildings, savings to taxpayers, yeah. etc. Qualified safer, safer buildings. Qualified safer. trained union workers right, right. who know what they're doing right. and not building these shoddy buildings that are gonna fall down at the first sneeze. Of which we had so many. <laughs> those, are, those are all over the place. Yeah. Oh. Actually, 7 Eleven up by. Oh uh, I mean, this is just a payoff, isn't it? Well, I. That would, here's that would the thing. Be, that, that's your thing. word, not mine. Here's the thing. <laughs> so, the Democratic Party in Santa Barbara County is essentially, for all intents and purposes, a pass through for the unions. 95% of their funding comes from unions. So, I find it. What was really amazing about this, this council session was just the, the, the process that it came through. So Greg and Eric Friedman put in this notice, we want to put this on the agenda. Okay, fine, that happens. You can put any, any two council members can put anything on the agenda. And then they try to s slam this thing through. Um, they, they determined that it was going to go to the ordinance committee before coming back to council, which is unheard of. Whenever, whenever there's a policy decision to be made, the usual procedure is, okay, staff, we want to do something about this. So you go write a report, bring it back to the full council, and the full council will say, well, do we want an ordinance or not? Well, okay, yes, we do. Then tell the ordinance committee what kind of ordinance they want. To send it to the ordinance committee first is crazy. Um, and, and, I mean, so what is this? I mean, Greg's on his way out. Is he, He's promised to get this done before the, the lights go out on him or what? Yeah, I think they want to get something done before they build the police station, which is going to be a huge project. Um, I'm sure that Hart wants to get this done as one of his legacy things before it, it um, before he leaves the council. I was just sort of struck at the, the you know, one hand, Greg Hart saying we need union trained workers to build quality buildings. But as soon, after my story ran, I had a lot of emails from people I'll saying bet. that, you know, we all have to follow the same rules. We all know we all have the same skills. We, it's not as though there's a class B who are building public buildings. <laughs> and so that was sort of interesting to me. I was also struck by a uh, new councilman, Oscar Gutierrez, because in the meeting he, he, uh, Oscar, he said, he said, and so this goes to my larger point, which is some council members get on and they immediately become indoctrinated by the, the city government. You know, they think they're city employees. Now they're, you know, they're right. part of the city institution as opposed to being that sort of healthy check <clears throat> that they're supposed to be. But, you know, I think it's the pipe fitters. Or, you know, they're up there in public comment, and he's over there saying, oh, I took my family. We got a tour from your <laughs> facility in Buellton, and I really hope that um, they will apply for jobs, <laughs> apprentice jobs. And it was sort of like this is not the forum to be, you know, talking about a potential deal with your family members. This is a public issue. So it just sort of struck me that, that you know, we have, you know, one good thing about Jason and Kristen on the council is they ask a lot of questions. They're, they're not fully. Jason particularly asks a lot of they're questions. Not they have not sold out to the city government. 
okay, and some of the other council members, you know, that's, I mean, as you know, you know, Dale would have been one of the ones who would have been sort of the healthy check, you know, a lot of the times, right? I wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily call this selling out to city government. Right. I mean, this is really about the unions. That's, I mean, project labor agreements, which is what this is, they called it a community, local hiring, whatever. Right. Uh, project labor agreements have a long history, and I think there's a real question whether this, if there were PLAs in place, would that really result in more local hiring? Probably not. We do not have a single union general contractor in Santa Barbara. We have some union subcontractors. Mm -hmm. uh, I read that 82% of the construction trades workforce in the state of California is non-union. Mm -hmm. So to give the unions complete control over every public works project in Santa Barbara, I think the council takes a long, hard look at that. Bottom line, well, I, I think it's going to pass. They have the votes. Obviously. I wouldn't be so sure because they really haven't exposed anything about this yet. Right. They had 12 public commenters, all from the unions, right. and Greg trying to rush this through. I think they need to take a really careful look. I, I, every, everything I've read says that PLAs increase the cost of public works projects anywhere from 15 to 25 percent. Now, and the, and the city attorney was kind of very shocked unhappy. and amazed. He was unhappy, unhappy, right, about being jammed on this. Yeah, yeah Ariel's never shy to express his feelings <laughs> in a public <laughs> meeting. He's no uh, Dan Wallace or Steve Wiley, that's for sure. Yeah. Now, has this been something that was uh, kicking around for a long time or just no, came out of nowhere? No, this was, as far as I can tell, this was sprung on everyone. And I think Randy Rouse's point was really the best in that whole discussion when he said, this really should have been brought up before Measure C. Yeah, Because this point. looks too much like, well, we waited for the, the tax increase to pass, and then we... That's a really good yeah. point. That is yeah. a good... But the, so where, where's the votes? I mean, Kristen and, and, and Oscar, Jason and Randy. Kathy. Eric. Eric. And, and Greg. The, and, Greg. Oh. They, and if Greg leaves, the new person they're going to... But, but I think it's important to yeah. say... They started a process. Kristen clearly didn't know anything about project labor agreements. I'm not criticizing her. She asked her. a she lot just of questions. Yeah, yeah, she asked a lot of questions. So this is a very early phase in all this, and they may find out when they get into the details that yeah. this is not the happy story that it appeared to be. Yeah. And uh, I think Rebecca Bjork, the public works director, she seemed a little bit like concerned also. <clears throat> all right. You'll be all over these campaign contributions, I'm You'll sure. Be all over it. <laughs> all right. Well, alas, we're out of uh, time. And uh, thanks to tonight's panel, Josh Molina, Nick Welsh, Blanca Garcia, and Dale Francisco. Thank you all for watching. Please visit our website, newsmakerswithjr.com, to check out my blog posts on politics and media in Santa Barbara and beyond and our YouTube channel, where you'll find a new special pre-election programming featuring the candidates for school board and the contenders in the hottest race for city college trustee, as well as an archive of past shows and interviews if your insomnia is bothering you. Thanks again to our director, J.P. Montalvo, to our crew, Ashe, Adam, Lizzie, and Mark, and as always, our high-powered, senior, top-ranking, high-energy executive producer, Hap Freund. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.